So, so where this is going to go, I have two minutes to tell you that is going to the limit of your imagination. Brain actuating technologies here. This is the latest. We just published this a year ago, the first brain-to-brain -brain interface that allows two animals to exchange mental messages so that one animal that sees something coming from the environment can send a mental SMS, a torpedo, a neurophysiological torpedo to the second animal, and the second animal performs the act that he needed to perform without ever knowing what the environment was sending as a message because the message came from the first animal's brain. So this is the first demo. I'm going to be very quick because I want to show you the latest. But what you see here is the first rat getting informed by a light that is going to show up on the left of the cage that he has to press the left cage to basically get a reward. He goes there and does it. At the same time, he's sending a mental message to the second rat that didn't see any light. And the second rat, in 70% of the times, is going to press the left lever and get the reward without ever experiencing the light in the retina. Well, we took this to a little higher limit by getting monkeys to collaborate mentally in a brain net, basically to donate their brain activity and combine them to move the virtual arm that I showed you before. And what you're seeing here is the first time that two monkeys combine their brains, synchronize their brain perfectly to get this virtual arm to move. One monkey is controlling the X dimension, the other monkey is controlling the Y dimension. But it gets a little more interesting when you get three monkeys in there and you ask one monkey to control X and Y, the other monkey to control Y and Z, and the third one to control X and Z. And you make them all play the game together, moving the arm to, in 3D into a target to get the famous Brazilian oranges. And they actually do. The black dot is the average of all these brains working in parallel, in real time. That is the definition of a biological computer, interacting by brain activity and achieving a motor goal. Where this is going, we have no idea. We're just scientists. <laughs> We're paid to be children, to basically go to the edge and discover what is out there. But one thing I know, one day in a few decades, when our grandchildren surf the net just by thinking, or a mother donates her eyesight to an autistic kid that cannot see, or someone speaks because of a brain-to-brain -brain bypass, some of you remember that it always started on a winter afternoon in a Brazilian soccer field with an impossible kick. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We got it. Um, thank you for sticking to the time, but actually we're giving you a couple more minutes because there are a couple of points we want to develop. And of course, clearly it seems that we need connected brains to figure out where this is going. Uh, so let's, let's connect all this together. Uh, so if I understand it correctly, one of the monkeys is actually getting a signal and the other monkey is reacting to that signal just because the first one is receiving it and transmitting the neurological... No, impulses. it's a little different. Uh, no monkey knows of the existence of the other two monkeys. Mm -hmm. They are getting a visual feedback in 2D, but the task they have to accomplish is 3D. They have to move an arm in three dimensions. But each monkey is only getting the two dimensions on the video screen that uh, the monkey controls. And as to get that thing done, you need at least two monkeys to synchronize the brains, but the idea is three. So what we found out is that when one monkey starts slacking down, the other two monkeys enhance their performance to get the guy to come back. So this adjusts dynamically, but the synchrony remains, the global synchrony remains the same. Now, if you flip without telling the monkey the dimensions that each brain has to control, like this guy is controlling X and Y, but he should be controlling now Y and Z, instantaneously, that animal's brain forgets about the old dimensions and it starts concentrating on the new dimensions. So what I need to say is that no Turing machine, no computer can predict 
what a brain net will do. So we will absorb technology as part of us. Technology will never absorb us. It's simply impossible. How, how many times have you tested this? Uh, and, and how many times have you succeeded versus failed? Oh, it's tens of times. With the three monkeys? Yes. Oh, several times. You can, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to talk about this here unless I have done it you know, a few times. And I forgot to mention, because of time, that just three weeks ago, a uh, European group just demonstrated the first man-to-man, brain-to-brain connection. And how does that play? It was one bit of information, but you know, big ideas start hum you know, in a humble way. But basically, one subject was uh, having, uh, the brain activity of one subject was transmitted to a second object, all non-invasive technology. So the first subject got a message, like our rats, a visual message, and transmitted to the second subject. The second subject received a magnetic pulse on the visual cortex, or a different uh, pulse, two different pulses. In one pulse, the subject saw something, on the other pulse, he saw something different. And he was able to verbally indicate what was the message the first subject was sending wow. through the internet. The next TED talk at the next conference. Miguel Nicolelli, thank, thank you. Thank you.